एक्सेट्रा सो सर्वलेस हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू नो द सर्वलेस एंड हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू यूज इन द प्रोडक्शन ओके वेरी फ्यू वेरी फ्यू अराउंड वन टू टू परसेंट राइट वट यू नो अबाउट सर्वलेस एनी वन कैन आंसर yeah mm. no uh yeah server is invoked only for a call only for the instance okay using cloud services as your backend application okay right yeah right exactly so serverless is like without server but actually there is a server so it's like a quite a misleading name that you don't have any server managing anything but there is a server and uh, it's not actually a server it's an uh, a very small fraction of the server which you manages so uh, let's me point out the three things today we are going to talk about the serverless are the good yeah so we are going to talk about the three things the good the bad and the ugly let, let me start by uh, my my introduction my name is chintan manugaria i have 8 uh, of 8 plus years of experience in the web development i am a full stack uh, developer and currently i am having my own it company in a, uh, sorry currently i have in my own it company in rajkot uh, gujarat we are a team of a uh, 12 developers and we are only focused in the product development domain so let's got uh, today's agenda what we are going to talk we are first we are going to talk about the what is serverless then we are going to talk about the what are the advantages uh, what are the benefits of using serverless in your production uh, not about the development then we are going to talk about some of the myths which are circulating in the market regarding the serverless and uh, some of the pain points some of the pain points which are which are need to be taken consider while using serverless in your project and lastly we are going to uh, demonstrate a demo application which will use harness the uh i would say 100% of serverless using face recognition technology to log in a user into the app so let's get started uh what is a serverless serverless is not something another framework which you just dive into it's not a, like a protocol which you need to follow strictly that uh, to, uh, i need to create an app and i need to follow this and this uh, rules uh to you know to get the app running uh, and uh, to make the all the network parameters uh, to be low it's a it's actually an event based architecture pattern uh if you look at the if you uh, uh, what do you say <coughs> sorry if you divide your application into different types of events then you can successfully uh, uh, convert your app into whole serverless back, uh, backend another thing is it's elastic in nature you don't have to manage your server for like a two request or two million request it scales automatically and you pay the fraction you pay the what what the your uh, what the users have used it you pay accordingly you don't have a fixed amount of cost for servers neither you have a big bill of uh, uh, servers which even though you user even you you have a two to three request it's a uh, there are certain examples of event based architecture like uh, user logging in there is a capturing of image uh, there is a an data analytics uh, say for example cropping of a user's image there are the some examples which uh, which can be taken uh, by a which can be handled by a, a serverless architecture very efficiently 
it's a natural uh, natural next step in the evolution of technology we have seen we have i think uh, how many full stack developers are here right so i think we have all most of them are full stack so we have seen a couple of uh, evolution in the cloud technologies uh, let me begin with the saas we have a uh, network uh, we have an application uh, layout say for example at the end, at the top we have application scalability data runtime memory os and hardware whereas in saas of what you manage is only up to the scalability and data right this is a saas now let's talk about the platform as a service same same architecture same data everything is this, but you're managing the things is much higher as compared to the saas you ha you have to manage runtime and the memory as well in the platform as architecture and last but not the rest list infrastructure as architecture infrastructure as a service sorry where you have all the things have to manage on your own they just give you the hardware right when now let's look at the serverless how what do you need to manage in your serverless thing let's look at the same example same uh, stack of the application and let's see how things you have to manage application scalability runtime memory os and you have to manage just your application you don't have to worry about the memory you don't have to worry about the data persistence of data you don't have to worry about the network network resources you just have to manage on your application you just have to focus on your application let's look at the some of the advantages of the uh, serverless serverless is written in most almost major any ma major languages like Node.js, Python, Java, uh, Golang, C# Sharp and PowerShell. But right now there are only two uh, popularity of among the serverless that is Node.js and Python. Most of the serverless uh, uh, so most of the serverless backend is written by Node.js and Python. Another advantage is, is you pay only what you use. like you don't if you uh, deploy a server say for example 20 dollars a month and even if you get uh, two request two to 10 request you have to pay 20 dollars at the end of every month where in this case you only pay what you what for a uh, every two to three request you don't have to pay for the each and every uh, for the whole server next step is you can edit your code directly in the server you don't have to uh, deploy in your you can obviously deploy your uh, AWS, uh, sorry uh, serverless environment in your local and then test it and then push put it in a uh, production but as far as some of the uh, AWS, uh, serverless providers like aws are there microsoft are there google functions are there they lets you uh, edit and create functions straight in the browser you don't have to test everything on your local machine they allow you to test everything in the browser it's like a direct to production not like a, de a development staging staging and production it's like production but only if you are sure of it and it uses env the best thing about it is it uses env env is uh, everybody is aware of env right environment variables so we have a different environment uh, variables for different environment now it also it's a basically if you are having a, uh, a, a serverless big uh, serverless an application which connects to different endpoints it will write it will be best written in the node js because of async and await issues there have been a couple of uh, uh, providers which which suggest you there a uh, couple of uh, recommendations which suggest you to write your serverless background serverless application in the node js only and today we are going to focus on the node js uh, part of the serverless thing so that uh, because it wo it works quite well first of all it works quite well with the vue js and second it it is very much we have a very well, uh, good developers uh, community for node js serverless uh, infrastructure another thing uh, you can you can connect to any api and connection points you don't have if you want to use a third party like a razor pay payment or a stripe payment or 
pay you payment or any other payments gateway services you can connect those apis through serverless it's not like a, a serverless will work on its own it will connect to the any other apis uh, you can run locally for development uh, you can create the whole serverless environment in your machine with just a simple one command line and uh, you can test your application in the serverless and then you can uh, push it to the production and if uh, there, uh, there are any changes you can edit directly in the production you don't have to uh, merge a branch or you don't have to any uh, commit an issue or something like that <coughs> so all in all you can write functions in different languages you can connect the api point you can uh, and you pay only for what you use and this is all without manning, managing any infrastructure right so this is like thanos you can do like snap of finger now let me uh, since we have talked about the advantages of a serverless should we make everything serverless the question might arise that if he has if this has so much benefits of a serverless should we make everything serverless the answer is no serverless is only good for event based architecture if your application i repeat if your application can be divided into event based architecture then serverless is the best suited application architecture for you uh, serverless is not suited for live streaming uh, not suited for web sockets not suited for uh, uh, like a uh, uh, notification like a uh, chatting uh, we have a chat uh, sockets so uh, socket implementation so it's not well, well suited for that but if it can be uh, produ produced in any other another server and if the only application which can be uh, converted into the event based uh, modular based architecture then i think the serverless would be best suited for you now since it's a new technology so there are a couple of myths coming in the market said you shouldn't use this you shouldn't use this so let's look at some of the myths which are in the market one of the myths is serverless isn't secure it's a total myth serverless is as secure as your traditional environment is there are no harm in using serverless for production even myself i am using serverless for around 8 to 9 months and we haven't run into we have audited our product into uh, through a different third party audited firms and we haven't run into any of the security issues till date another thing is uh, serverless creates a vendor lock in so for example if you are using aws for your serverless uh, vendor uh, and if you you have you have got a you have couple of limitations over there and you want to switch to microsoft or google functions you just have to change two lines of code and everything will be running as, as exactly as, as was in a previous vendor so this is one of the myths which uh, lacks uh, develop which uh, frightens the developers that if we have to change the vendor we have to change the whole code it's not true you can change you have to just change the configuration file in the serverless uh, architecture and that's it all your existing code will be run into new uh, vendor which you choose another th uh, myth is serverless is infinitely scalable it's not it's not a uh, you can't run facebook on this one serverless because uh, serverless can be uh, scalable to a limit which you define it's not infinitely scalable so for example if i uh, if I limit the serverless to like uh, 5 million requests per second, that's possible. But uh, I can't re uh, so limit the, I can't scale the serverless to 1 billion requests per second. That's not true. That's a total myth and uh, it's not infinitely scalable. Now, most important thing we need to consider while using serverless is the, uh, some of the pain points, uh, some of the things which we need to consider when I using the, uh, uh, serverless architecture first of all server serverless as architecture is a stateless it doesn't uh, store any state it doesn't uh, uh, store any data for that you have to feed them data they will process the data and they will give you the return back so first point is latency or in serverless term you can say the cold start cold start is in you ask for a data they they warm up the function 
they have analyzed the data and then they return the data. That's called the co uh, cold time period, that uh, which lets uh, which uh, waits your application for a certain amount of time to uh, to uh, certain amount of time to wait for a uh, return data. For, so for avoiding cold start, what we should do is we should uh, make the application structure in such a way that all the cold start time will be in the background. User wouldn't notice that there is a cold start time. User user won't see the see the loading button over there in the in the web page. Another architecture is choice of a language. As I said earlier, Node.js and Python are considered to be the fastest and have has the least cold time in terms of serverless. Whereas a C sharp, I think, and a PowerShell has the most cold time, uh, according to the uh, serverless white papers and another point to decrease the uh, cold start time is use the least amount of network resources you use the network resources to a sufficient uh, in a elegant manner that it doesn't use so much of your memory it doesn't uh, take so much of your time to use uh, the, to use the processing of your uh, application Another point is to be considered is observability. Now, since we are all developers, we know how debugging works, right? We have to debug a certain amount of point. But at this point of time, serverless has debugging features, a very limited debugging feature, should, should I say. First of all, uh, it's difficult to point stack traces. You won't get stack traces in the uh, serverless. You can work around like a uh, logging function, but you won't get a JavaScript, a typical stack traces JavaScript in serverless architecture. Another point is use third party logging services like uh, there is a uh, Twistbud and Dashbid uh, applications over there in the market, which comes at a very minimal price, but they give you the monitoring platforms and login platforms, which uh, helps you to discover the bug which helps you to debug the code efficiently as compared to other uh, as compared to just the logging service which is provided by the uh, service providers and since we are developers there is a lot of room for develop for this point of space so if anybody interested a uh, side project may be they can use uh, uh, this opportunity to provide a specific debugger for the service application. I mean, th this is just a suggestion. There is nothing like that. Uh, so today we are going to use a, a demo application using serverless technologies and Vue.js. And uh, this is a very basic application. This is our production ready application, but I have just uh, cut it uh, in a part where we can uh, uh, fee, we are where for this meetup, we have just uh, uh, sliced it down to a very light uh, version of it. So first, let's look at the basic architecture of the uh, application. We have used Vue.js application as the for capturing the user image. We have harnessed the data of the Vue.js application to upload that image into the S3 bucket, AWS. Uh, for specific, we are using the AWS for this application. After the once the image is uploaded to the S3 bucket, it triggers the serverless functions. Serverless functions then use the face recognition technique from the AWS. They have a face recognition uh, uh, AI which recognizes the faces in the images and the videos. Face recognition technique returns the data to the lambda function. Lambda function, as I said, that this lambda functions, serverless functions. Are